Welcome back. We are joined once more here in the capital of Malawi in the long way for some garden birding. In this video we're going to be tracking a special bird, a very colourful and striking bird, the violet back starling. The African Paradise Flycatcher, a nomad. The breeding male has a long tail and notable crest. At times you will find a white morph. I wish to witness one of these one day. The female and juvenile lacks the colourful face and the long tail. It has been a busy season and here we have a chick who just left the nest. The parents are expected to be on their greatest defence. The male spots an intruder, hits him over the head, the intruder annoyed. The flycatchers dive bombing the goshawk until the goshawk accepted defeat. Every garden requires a suitable gardener. A hurricane thrush. A bird that resembles the fallen leaves. Their two malar stripes are very noticeable and behind the eye a bare patch. And a bit of dirt at the end of the bill from digging the soil. One of the very glossy blue starlings that shines in the sunlight, the Miombo blue eared starling. I failed to record this, but the starling slowly moved down from the tree and proceeded to attack the hurricane thrush. The young ones are very brown colour, very similar from that of their close relative, the lesser blue eared starling, but they found more in the north. Here you can see some of the juveniles, and this one still needs to learn how to distinguish between a proper perchable twig. The heat makes this shrub a very cosy place to relax for this red eyed dove. A very large pinkish dove with a red eye and bare skin around the eye. They feed on the ground looking for seeds and after some good feeding it's time for a drink. Not as harsh and noisy as the green wood hoopoos. A distant relative, perhaps, showing us those beautiful white markings on the wing. They are smaller and more solitary, the common symmetrical. He surprised me as I looked up and I saw him clambering up into the tree. Their feeding habits are very similar to those of the wood hoopers, where they use their long de curve bill to probe for insects that are out of reach under the bark. Not to be confused with the Jacobin's cuckoo. The Lavalent cuckoo has a heavily streaked throat and a longer tail than the cousin. The Lavalent cuckoo is a brood parasite, and that means they lay their eggs in other birds' nests.
They favor the nests of the bulbuls and babblers. The male and female will assist each other in getting their egg into the nest. A fairly vocal small woodpecker, the cardinal woodpecker. The cardinal woodpecker is heavily streaked. They use their zygodactyl foot structure, meaning two toes forward and two toes back, to grip the bark of the chosen tree and then crawl up with no effort at all. Females saw no potential in this tree and left. The male continued all the way to the top and enjoyed the view. The great reed warbler is a migratory bird that comes to visit the more hotter months here in Africa. Like in their name, they are found in large reed beds along or close to water. Looking at that little collection in the mouth of this male violet back starling, he is yet to catch some termites. The male surprised me as I was filming the Great Reed Warbler. I watched this male shake off the termites from the stick, then stuffing the collected termites into this little bowl shape. The male and female do not look alike at all. The female you will see at the end of the video can sometimes be mistaken for a thrush. The southern moss weaver coming to eat some small fruits. They can be very busy birds at times. The male would build more than 20 nests a season for females to choose the right one. It is important after feeding to clean the beak. Being a tad bigger than the other seed eaters, the green winged patella can be a bit of a bully. The waxbill were here first, but the waxbills don't mind. They come back and grab some seeds anyway. Moving in pairs, they are monogamous. The male and female tropical boo-boo share exactly the same plumage. 
At times you can tell the difference if you have some good light. They forage on the ground, and like other shrikes, they will impale their prey, saving them for later. It appears that we have stumbled onto some tracks.